And welcome back, family, to another episode of uh, Metaphysics on Your Mind. Um, this this uh, particular episode, um, we're going to look at three verses, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it uh, as we kind of go through them, but I think it would be instructive in that... <coughs> Again, we're kind of using this motif of the theater of the mind, how we're perceiving, how um, we're projecting the images that we're reading onto our internal screens. And uh, let's let's look at these three and see uh, see what you see. All right. So uh, the first one we're going to look at is Colossians, the book of Colossians 3.18, I think it's 3.18 through through, uh, through verse 20. So this is um, uh, the New Testament, and let's take it from verse 18. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Now we're going to go to Ephesians 5, 21 through 24. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And when we read, when I propose, when we read fear of God, that's also equivalent to the respect, right? You you have respect for a force that is far superior to your own, right? Uh, So submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands, in everything. And then we're going to jump down to verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Okay, we're going to jump down down to 1 Peter 3, 1, and then verse 6 and 7. Let's see what we got here. First Peter. I'm just going to read them through because there, you know, there's an obvious thread here. Okay, First Peter, uh, chapter three, verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Key here is you, this is about the third time we've we've said it. It says to your own husbands. It doesn't say to your husband to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And we're going to jump down to six and seven, and then we'll discuss. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers not be hindered. Okay, so, the 
common thread there, as we can clearly hear, is that wives should be submissive to their husbands. And as we kind of pointed out, it doesn't say submit to your husbands. It says submit to your own husbands, which is a key. The other thing about these verses is not everybody has a wife or a husband. Not everybody's married. So it, it would appear that in this book, most of what we read is relevant in one way or another to each individual. But what if you don't have a wife? What if you don't have a, a, a husband? Okay, so this only applies to married couples or, you know, committed relationships or whatever, and that the, the woman should be subservient. We propose that in we're, we're consistent in what we're proposing that this book is about the mind and how the mind works. When it talks about wife, who's the wife? Well, remember in Genesis, Adam, the character, was given a helpmeet whose name was Eve, okay? A help me, meaning someone to help you, a help mate, a, a, a companion. In this context, we're saying, once again, that as we talked about before, in biblical mysticism, the right hemisphere of the brain and we're going to say that this is the right side, which you're seeing. The right hemisphere represents the spiritual. The left hemisphere represents, and again, it's not that you don't use both sides of the brain, but this is the representation. This is the symbolism that's used because there is, <laughs> there is consistency to it. The right hemisphere we, we know is the east side, where the sun, when you're facing north, the sun is always, the sun rises in the east, okay? The left side, the rational side, is male or masculine. The right side is feminine. Each and every person has both, okay? You have, it's like yin and yang, you've heard about that. You have masculine and feminine within you. The representation here, as we know from the story of Adam, was Eve was to be subservient to Adam. And she, you know, she was the cause of the temptation of Adam eating the fruit that was given to her by the serpent. And again, we know the serpent we're talking about in, 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 in our proposition is the activity of the spinal column. The communication, the signals, the impulses, the neurons, all that stuff is, this is, this is the serpent, as we said in a much earlier installments, where that communication, feeling, desire, in, in Genesis, Eve represented the evolution of the mind, okay? We know that mind, as we talked about, right, isn't, men are mental, men meaning women and men, right, the mind. The subconscious mind, which is the powerhouse, okay? is subject to the rational mind, the conscious mind. Even though it has that vast trove of creativity, it is also the doorway to the divine, which is why the right side, the divine right of kings, the left side is the king because it says in Genesis that Adam, uh, Eve was to be subservient to Adam, Right? So, 
Uh, we also remember that in the Cain and Abel story, Cain had power over Abel and killed Abel. Abel representing the spiritual, Cain representing the flesh or the physical. So <laughs> the way it's set up is that even though there's this vast ocean of information, it has to be channeled and, and, and culled into something that is efficient and functional in, in the world we live in. And that's channeled through the so-called rational or masculine side. Logic, okay, is part of the left side or, or you know, symbolically, the masculine side. The right side is subservient, okay? So when it talks about wives submitting, if you didn't have a wife or a husband, then these would mean nothing, but you do. We all do. So what it's saying is that the wife is subservient to the husband. The subconscious mind is subservient to the conscious mind. That's why it says, submit to your own husband. It said that that's the code. Your own husband, instead of your husband, is saying, this is your own husband in your head. And we all have that. Okay, so within our minds, this is the husband, this is the wife, or the help me, okay? This is subservient to this, but this is supposed to be kind to this. Why? Because it's the help me. It is where we draw that whole trove of creativity and uh, memory and intuition, okay? That's coming from the right side, symbolic. So there's, there's supposed to be a harmony that these scriptures are talking about between the husband and the wife. The husband's the boss because the truth is he is in the mind. Not necessarily out here. What about a single mother? Okay, there's no husband. That's how you know it's talking about each and every individual. It's saying, hey, you are at war up here. Okay, you've got to find a way to have harmony because when they're balanced, again, we're talking about what is Libra about, the skills that we all have to have. If the universe is based on balance. Okay, so when you're out of balance, you have chaos, you have Babel, as opposed to Jerusalem, the city of peace or the mind at peace. Okay, so. It doesn't mean that women or wives should be subservient to men. What it's saying is, is that this is a partnership, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, okay? The rational mind has to have a leadership role, the logical mind in order for us to operate in this physical reality. But it's, shall we say jet fuel, it's, it's power, comes over here from the high priestess. You could say high priest if you want, but the high priestess, because of its feminine, because of its intuition, okay, the rational mind is like the sun. It projects, and the feminine is like the moon. It reflects. One projects, one reflects. Okay? So that's what... I propose these mentions about women be subservient. Now, the fact that institutions have utilized that kind of language to justify uh, bigotry or mistreatment of women, well, there's no doubt that that's happened. Because remember, when you go around saying that any of these books is the actual word of God and you read it literally, well, that's the kind of thing that's going to happen. That's why we say that you have to look at it symbolically, metaphorically. It tells a truth, but it's an inner truth 
And it's an inner truth that's common to all of us, not just only men, grown women. So within you, you have a husband and a wife. And as we talked about that maritime, Mary, meant the waters, you get married, the waters represent emotion. You also have the emotional component, Eve desired the fruit. So she convinced her husband, Adam, to eat the fruit, the rational mind. Did we not read about the four horsemen of the apocalypse? That the white horse, the spirit, and then the red horse, the emotions, and then the black horse, the intellect, that the red horse had the power to take peace from the earth? Okay, it's the same story. The emotional nature, if it's not under control or if it's not disciplined, it's what happens. So that's, I thought would be something interesting to look at was just the fact that if you read these things literally, you can come out with things that, I don't know, um, you have to judge for yourself. But anyway, that's, that's what we propose these um, stories are speaking about is the internal dynamics of, of each of our minds. Once again, we thank you. Peace.